This podcast episode is sponsored by Palumbo and Bertrand, Attorneys at Law. Good day, seniors and active adults. Welcome back to our YouTube podcast, Get Your Weekly Slice, where we protect, inform, and educate you, our seniors and active adults, every week about what you should know as you age. It is about keeping you, our seniors, in the know. Downsizing part three is step five of the five easy steps to downsizing. So let me reiterate, part one was about finding a place to live, being proactive, not reactive, getting that step out of the way now or in the future. Step two, again, was part one, having the discussion with family and friends. Step three, this was in part two of downsizing, trusted resources and services. We as certified senior housing professionals have that network of professionals. Step four is getting rid of the stuff, the most dreaded part of the five easy steps to downsizing. And now we're at step five, reflecting on the move and your new home. So this is a time to reflect because if you were moved into either an independent 55 plus, an independent assisted memory care community or independent assisted community or assisted memory care community, Either way, you were helped to unpack, to get situated day one in your new environment. And it was a big move. It was a big step in your life transitioning to a smaller footprint that's more secure, that's can be a great place for you to meet new friends. Keep in mind, everybody that moves into any one of these type of communities, they don't know anyone and just understand that the people in there went through the same thing where they didn't know anybody because all of your friends or family, they've either moved away or they either passed away. So it's now a, a, diff, a part of your life that you meet new friends. And keep in mind, when you're in and you reflect and celebrate, now you don't have to worry about the house, all the things about the house that worried you before. You don't have to worry about the maintenance of the home, the cleaning of the home, no longer do you have to worry about the stuff. It's all been addressed. We've helped you through that process of downsizing to where you're at today because we didn't want you to be overwhelmed. And we took the time to provide options for you to make the right move, not just a reactive move. That's why we promote and advocate that you are more proactive than reactive. This is a great time to sit back and enjoy the freedom of not having to worry about cooking, not worrying about your security, not worrying about if something happens, there's going to be medical staff on site or nearby that will be able to assist 24 hours a day. You're going to meet new friends. Those friends, keep in mind, you're going to be able to share your life stories as they are going to be able to share their stories. And the one thing I've understood is when people make, when seniors and active adults make that move into these type of communities, and as they age, we all have stories. 
a lifetime of stories. And all we want to do is share those stories with other people who are willing to listen. So keep in mind that when you meet other people, they also have stories like you. And all they want is someone to listen to those stories. And it's a great way to meet new people, to find out what these people have done in their lifetime. And they're going to find out what you've done in your lifetime. You're going to have new hobbies. There's going to be lots of activities in a 55 plus. You're going to have a choice of doing new hobbies, existing hobbies. You're going to be able to read more. You're going to have more interests. You can play cards, games. There's going to be people that are going to want to do those things. And you're going to be able to uh, team up or connect with a lot of people that are going to have shared interests with what you like. But also you need to be a little bit more open-minded about doing some different things as you age. Because let's face it, when, when we live, times... It just seems like there's never enough time to do anything. And now you have that time to do some things that you've always thought about. Like, for instance, myself, I still, at my age, I still want to take piano lessons. I don't know why. I've always wanted to do that. I never seem to have the time to do that, but that's what I want to do. I also want to do a little bit deeper dive into genealogy and at my age which is an active adult not at a senior level yet but at my age i want to do a little bit more traveling to find out more about genealogy over in europe where where everybody came from and try and connect and and just do that it it interests me those are some of my interests this move is going to give you more time to visit with family, have them come over. They can eat dinner, breakfast, lunch, whatever, at the community you're at. You can still go out to shop. You can still travel if you're an active adult. And even if you're a senior and you're in good health, you can still travel if you feel up to it. But it's just a whole different type of optimism about life. It's just different because it's going to free you up and avail yourself to a lot more time that you never had before to do some things that you've known would be interesting or you wanted to get accomplished. You're always going to have a support network. Always keep in mind as a certified senior housing professional, we don't end at the sale or the move. We still keep in touch with you because we know that you're going to have senior related questions or concerns as you age. And we want to be there to help you sort through, continue to provide options for you as you are in your new place. Keep in mind, you need to exercise, you need to eat right. And I know it's difficult because a lot of these communities like to tout they are good food or in nutritious menus, but they also like to push the pies, the cakes, the cookies. If you could kind of hold that stuff at bay and you don't start gaining weight during your, not during, but while you're living in your new environment, that would be helpful as well. So you just got to make sure you continue to eat right. You exercise. They have a lot of these places have exercise rooms. They have place on the outside where you could go out and walk. And it's in, in most cases, it's a secured environment. So that's, that's always a good thing, but you got to watch what you eat. You got to keep your emotions in check and you have to be rested, well rested. And you can read more. There's so many things that you just need to kind of revise as you age what you're going to do because you're going to be busy. You can be busy every day. 
And, and one most important thing is stay hydrated. And I always laugh about this. That when I have my seminars, and I haven't had anybody ask me yet, I always provide water. And I always keep it in the back of my mind. If somebody asks me, how come you don't have coffee or Diet Coke or lemonade or anything like that? And my response is going to be and will be, you need to drink water, more water. Because I know a lot of seniors and active adults don't drink a lot of water and they get dehydrated and that causes a lot of problems. And now <clears throat> one other thing I want to keep in mind, while you're in that community, to the best of your knowledge, what I had mentioned, stay healthy, eat right, sleep well. But if you possibly can, stay out of the hospital as a last resort, stay out of the hospital because it, it just never seems to be anything that's good. When you go to the hospital, then they like to transfer you to a, a, a rehab. In, in most cases, if you stay healthy, if you stay fit, stay active, stay hydrated, you won't have to worry about that for years to come. So reflect and celebrate your new living space. And I had mentioned earlier in, in the part two of the downsizing, if you have given something to family through your downsizing process and you didn't have time because there's so many things going on when you were going through that, making the move, trying to figure out what you want to say, what you want to donate, what you want to give away, and, and uh, who you want to get what. But keep in mind, if you didn't have, it, it is very, it would almost extend your legacy as to what you gifted or gave to a family member, but provide them with a little history as to why you have it, why it is sentimental to you, and why you felt so attached to that, and why you wanted to give that to someone because I, I reflect on what I have for my grandmother. She had fiesta wear and I always, I always say this, it's all I ever wanted from her. She didn't have much, but the one thing that I liked about the fiesta wear is that when my brother and I would serve mass and after mass, my grandmother and my two aunts would always be there at the mass and then we would go to my, our grandmother's house for breakfast. And she always had Sara Lee coffee cake. And she always served us coffee. And back then, they always said that coffee would stunt your growth. But she always served that coffee in that fiesta ware with the saucer. And then we had a plate for the, for the um, coffee cake. And I always remember that. And it was always special to me doing that. And back then they always said that coffee would stunt your growth. But keep in mind, I was six foot two. My brother was six foot three. That didn't, that didn't work with us. But that's an example of something that you might have left for your grandson, your grandchildren, your daughter, your son, your niece or nephew, or whoever, a neighbor, a friend, you left something, try to attach a story with that item so then when they have it and friends or family see what it is they can always share that story about you why you gave it to them and why it meant so much to you and how and why it should mean so much to them so i hope this helps kind of put things in perspective in regards to reflect and celebrate. And one last thing, which you can do is now that you have the time and I, sh and I mentioned to you about stories that we all have life stories, which you might want to consider is putting those stories to pen to paper in a journal, write it up. So then 
when and if that time ever comes, your family has some type of legacy written by you for them, for the future descendants that you leave or that you leave behind. So I'd like you to consider that. And enjoy your new life, your transitioning life, meeting new friends, staying healthy, eating well, hydrating, and doing the things that you've always wanted to do and experiencing doing new things. In closing, I hope you enjoyed today's Get Your Weekly Slice. If you'd like to discuss further today's topic, you can reach me via email at mike at your, Y-O-U-R, Florida, spelled out, haven, H-A-V-E-N.com, or call me at 407-340-5291 to set up an appointment. I provide a free one and a half hour in-person meeting to discuss your future plans on aging while providing you a minimum of three options to choose from. Don't forget to follow us and like us on Facebook and Instagram. While on my website at yourfloridahaven.com, sign up for my monthly newsletter, RSB to any of my in-person events, which are held at the Orange County Library, Smarter Senior Seminar Series events, and to view any and all of my videos and podcasts. We hope these podcasts are helpful. And if they are, please share with your friends, family, and neighbors by letting them know what we offer as certified senior housing professionals, designated real estate agents to our seniors and active adults as they age. We're a connector. It is about keeping seniors in the know. Till next time, when you come back to get your weekly slice. This podcast episode is sponsored by Palumbo and Bertrand, Attorneys at Law.